Okay. Hi, everyone. I don't know if you see me yet. Toby, can you tell me if you see me yet? Or is it the jingle? Okay, the jingle. Okay. So I think it's 30 seconds. Something like that. I wish there was something to tell us. Okay, hi everyone. This is Greg from Greg's Whiskey Guide. Uh, first time for a long time, I know, uh, in live stream show. Uh, I hope you're all well and some will be joining us uh, soon. This is uh, not a birthday, a uh, double birthday, because Toby will have his birthday uh, around me, my date as well, in a couple of days. But this is, uh, I, we thought it could be fun to go uh, for, uh, let's say, three quarters, uh, three out of four of the whiskeys on my table, which will be blind. Hey, <laughs> hi, Frederick, much appreciated. Uh, before I introduce my guests, just uh, let you explain how it will work. I will uh, tell you, uh, I will let uh, Toby speak, uh, Toby from Whiskey Shared, uh, speak about uh, his news and uh, we'll have a, a short debate uh, about uh, English whiskey. I thought it could be interesting to have a uh, Toby's take about English whiskey, uh, because he, vid he visited some of these distilleries. He has some bottles. He did also bottle on your own. Hi, Donna Bass. And then we're going to start the uh, the tasting. And like I said, it's not about uh, doing records of guessing and stuff like that. It's more about exchanging our notes uh, and uh, see how things are go uh, going for uh, both of us. Considering, like I said in my latest video, that uh, when you take, like I said, Whiskey Magazine, at the end you have uh, you have reviews, and usually it's two people doing the reviews, two professional reviewers, and most of the time the notes and the ratings are completely different, <laughs> or partly different, right? So. Before we, uh, I get too talkative and bore you, let's bring up Mr. Toby. I hope it works. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Toby. How you doing? Hi, Greg. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for having oh. me. Okay, no, you're very welcome every time. Uh, I know a lot of people know you. You're almost now up to a thousand. You're not yet at a thousand uh, subs, but it's not. It's very close. So please, if you don't know him yet, and I forgot to put a link, but there's a link in the description uh, of the video anyway. Um, uh, so can you, for those who don't know you, uh, introduce please uh, your channel and the kind of things you do, and then we'll, we'll uh, thank you. Yeah, so I've, I've, I've been making YouTube videos for about four years now, and um, it all started off with uh, bottle reveals and uh, blind tastings, and now I regularly... Um, do Two whiskey months. reviews on a weekly basis and once a month i do a blind tasting called mystery monthly minis there you go i can see your you've got my mystery monthly minis coin there so um yeah so Hi, GD. it's weekly content mostly reviews and um yeah uh blind tastings once a month perfect and we have gd from uh, often i see him on scotch down under channel who has a bunch of special limited releases from, uh, he's in Poland now, but he's, uh, I think he's American. He has a bunch of limited editions of uh, Glen Scotia. You have no idea. <laughs> so good to see you there. And I know you have the only one that's not blind in the flight. I know, uh, GD, you have this one, the, 18, the 1832. So uh, good for you. <laughs> so people, if uh, if you have the Glen Scotia 1832, uh, please feel free to pour yourself a drum. It's not going to be the first, but the second drum of the evening. So, you know, you have time to maybe grab a bottle or if you like, grab the uh, double cask because it's not so far from it without revealing too much. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we have also Ken in, in on board. That's fantastic. Thank you, Ken. It's the first time. 
so uh, it's good fun. So hi everyone. So uh, before we start the the tasting, I would like to uh, ask you a few questions, if you don't mind, about your English. Your English. So uh, about your English whiskey experience. Maybe first, uh, how do you feel about English whiskey today? Uh, a quick overview of uh, the situation uh, in, on what you can see. How. Uh, we're not going to discuss for hours, but just a short take of uh, overview. And then I will ask you, because we spoke together and it's because of you. Uh, let me show the bottle. It's because of you that I bought this, that you sent me a sample of the bourbon cask. I say all the time bourbon oak, but it's bourbon cask. Uh, and uh, then I got more into Cotswold after that. Uh, so you visited Cotswold, like I said. So, yeah, please, a, a bit of introduction about English whiskey, and then uh, we'll have something special for the viewers from you and maybe for me as well. Over okay. So, yeah, I, I would say I'm a, a fan of English whiskey. I think um, I think I arrived uh, it, on the whiskey scene as a, as a um, novice at the right time because English whiskey was mm. starting to explode. And obviously, although the British Isles is uh, quite a small uh, series of nations, Scotland, being a big whiskey producer, is still, you know, a good five, six hundred miles away. So I think it's about five hundred miles the Scottish border from where I am. So that's um, that's quite a distance. And obviously, English whiskey is now on my doorstep. So I've got better options and more choices to be able to visit the distilleries because. They're much closer. I visited. How, sorry, how well, many distilleries are around you? Let's say a hundred so, kilometers or so. Yeah, so I'm. Well, the the nearest to me are the ones in Kent and uh, London, because obviously London's the nearest okay. major city to me, um, uh, other than Brighton. But Brighton doesn't have any whiskey distilleries. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, there's a, a, <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a good number of uh, English distilleries now in London. So they're um, probably well, they're only an hour and a half away. So it's wow. it's quite easy to to visit them. But the fact that there's now uh, yeah, there's a boom, right? We yeah, can say there's it's, a boom it's an explosion English of of mm -hmm. English distilleries, and they're cropping up everywhere. I think. Obviously, people are passionate about the liquid and they want to have their own stamp on the uh, whiskey yeah. landscape with something unique. And um, yeah, although there's lots of approaches to it, most of them are very small distilleries by yeah, craft, um, yeah. Scottish Boutique, standards. Yeah, they're craft. Say. Yeah, and most of them produce gin in the first three years so they can yeah, have an income. And yeah, right. um, their gins are often, you know, well regarded so yeah the courts are obviously, doing something, right. yeah, obviously yeah, doing something right yeah they're obviously doing something right so um the the first english distillery i visited was uh bimba and obviously okay. bimba has become very um, hype infamous <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's uh, very well regarded and very well sought after so um it's pretty much guaranteed that whatever they release sells out and um even if some of their liquid is occasionally not the highest mm. standard there's okay. such a good following that it doesn't matter you know yeah. if it if their whiskey is sometimes you know slightly below par because people will buy it regardless so do you feel they are they're going to be obliged to expand at some point whether they want or they don't want because they can't supply the demand or yeah i, I think so and obviously that they've they've gone one step further and and started to build a, a scottish distillery so Ooh. um so the dunfell distillery in scotland is is another angle so rather than just going bigger and better they've um, okay. they've gone where most people want to spend their whiskey money in that scotch hmm. well me my first contact with an english distillery was way back to probably 15 years or so i don't know I don't remember even uh, my mistake. You're going to correct me. Uh, the uh, When was it founded? And now I feel stupid because I didn't double check. The English Whiskey and Co., which is called St. George here. Yeah, St. George's uh, Distillery. Yeah, yeah but I oldest. don't. 
Yeah, I don't call it like that. You know why? Because the first St. George whiskey I ever tried was with John Glazer in his lab near London because he wanted to surprise me. And it was 2007 uh, because the uh, St. George distillery in Alameda, California does single malts too. So All right. <laughs> it's a bit tricky. Uh, and the brand, the brand of the St. George in England is uh, the English whiskey company, right? Yeah. So uh, this was my first contact, but it was not super ready at that time. It was too young, the chapters. So I didn't bought any. And uh, before I say, okay, now it's better. I have to buy one. It's very hard to find here now. So I hope someday symbolically to get me a bottle of the standard one, at least with beautiful new packaging uh, that they have now. And uh, so, yeah, I ask you something not to uh, also for practical reasons earlier on to not to spend time to search in your cabinet. So <laughs> my uh, thing was, uh, it's a bonus thing. It was not, uh, and thank you for playing the game. It was not planned uh, even before today. Uh, oh yeah, before that, but it might be related. <laughs> you did visit also Cotswolds. It's a distillery which took time for me to uh, attract my interest. And now I am fully interested. So can you speak? just a few uh, a few words about your visit there how it is to visit uh yeah also, so uh, I, I visited for my birthday last year and um there's a video I, guys about that you have to check it out yeah but, yeah I, I put together a, a short video of uh, my time there but it's quite interesting because it's i'd say it's a small distillery it's bigger than bimba bimba is uh, tiny mm. um but it's it's bigger than bimba and um it's very well designed it fits in with the locality um yeah. there's lots of historic buildings in the cotswolds so they've tried to make it fit in with the uh, sort of uh sort of yellow stone or orange stone sort of buildings um and it, it does look really pretty and and uh, very uh quaint but everybody there's friendly it's really nice um you get to see the whole process and they even have their own bottling plant on site and yep. you get to see that I they saw... have their own maturation warehouse and you get to go inside get to taste the new make they've still that's got their important. first original cask that's still there and you can see oh, that um i think important. they've only ever drawn one or two bottles out of it and they yeah for auction sold. i think something yeah like they that. auctioned yeah. the the contents for charity for charity or, yeah. yeah that's that's nice and, and yeah, so yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say at the end of the distillery tour, they basically pull out every single bottle they've got, including yeah. their non whiskies. So they bring out their gins, they bring out things like their vermouth and their amaros and their um, liqueurs. And you can basically try every single product that they make if you want. That's fantastic. I'm not yeah. sure every distillery around does that, Toby. What do you think? Yeah, and it's quite good if you're if you're driving, and you want to take some with you. Yeah, you um, then they'll pour any of those samples for you. There's n there's no limit. And That's fantastic, honestly. You, you don't I feel had... like you're being rushed yeah. at all. You can take your time. Um, That's, That's and then very they've nice. Got a, a really nice uh, shop um, to to then spend your money and and buy some bottles. <laughs> and that's where I got a hand fill as well. Yeah, which yeah. Was a so task. so I really recommend you people to check out. Uh, whiskey shirts video about Cotswold's visit uh plus uh he uh, you did a lot of i don't know how many now videos about different Cotswold's bottlings for people interested to check it out and anyway check out toby's uh it's just whiskey shared on uh, whiskey shared on youtube so you will find it right uh okay so i ask you prior to uh, to this to pick uh, if you like three bottles that might be uh, your favorite English whiskies, so maybe people who's watching, knowing your English and knowing we're going to speak not necessarily about English whiskies on the table, but uh, what would be your three favorite of the moment or three that people could be uh, finding interesting to try from your collection, Toby? Yeah, so first one is the uh, first just... ever 
general release from Bimba. Just a second, I'm going to highlight you. Ajouté, uh, it doesn't work. Okay, so we're going to do the contrary. Okay, it's on cam. Yeah, so, so that, this that... is a Richard, their second release, yeah. right? Okay. Now this was the, so this was um, their first major release, and I got it signed by the distiller himself, oh. Darius. That's cool. Um, I collected that from the distillery, and okay. um, yeah, it's <laughs> it's uh, it's a very good example of their spirit. It it really does shine um, in the uh, Richard ca uh, casks, but it's it's an interesting story that one because. Um, from what I understand, they were never charred properly in the first place, and they oh. bought some casks which another dis distillery couldn't actually get their spirit to uh, age properly yeah. in. So they I emptied the that, story. had them charred, and and that's the result. And it's okay. it's not too punchy. Um, I think it's um, a really it's tasty one I example. liked. It's one I liked, but I had a few reservation uh, on my side about its oaky side. But the main thing also is the first release was so good, but I guess completely different from this, that I had expectations for something similar, and it wasn't similar because they had yeah. Well, uh, obviously the the first was exceptional. Yeah, the first wasn't just um, um, effectively ex bourbon casks, was it? So um, no, no, no. It was uh, yeah, very so, old sherry casks. Yeah, so, so the and, uh, influences. Is obviously going to mask some of the the uh, new yeah that potential. that's always the question that's why I would like to retry the new make I tried very early in my discovering of English whiskey so maybe it will be good today to rediscover it and uh, and see how the rest of the range I really recommend the signature uh, no sorry I'm talking about Cotswold sorry no I, <laughs> I, I didn't try the Bimber's new make uh, I'm not sure no no they didn't have it. They were the first the, release. The new make is fantastic. I will be curious about that. Okay, second bottle, maybe bottle. So, second is surprise, surprise. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> so yeah, it's the one yeah, that so I bought. Apart from the uh, signature, which is a really good example of what Cotswolds can be, this is that on steroids. It's you know, it's cast strength. It's almost sixty percent, and I, I think it's it really is really is a tasty whiskey. I would just uh, contradict you, my friend, a little bit because it is not the same recipe. It's hundred percent. No, it isn't because obviously right. there's STR um, in the other Because one. Whiskey Life Paris, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, uh, I, I thought you were going to say the founder's choice. Well, the signature on steroid because it's 100% SDR and cast strength. No, you don't think that it's interesting. Yeah, obviously the the um, the STR maturation that they've used in the um, signature is quite small. It's mostly ex bourbon, so you get that um, spirit character from their new make come through really okay, well on so both of them. And you know that better than me. So what you mean to people and me understand is that this bourbon cask showcases more the distillery character. It does, yes. Is that okay? Very interesting. Yeah. And what surprised me in that because bourbon can have a can be a bit off-putting if it's too much first feel and stuff with the ginger, the very spicy and oaky side. Yeah. What was absolutely fantastic for me, <laughs> I, when I say that, I think all the time of uh, uh, Gert from Whiskey Lover Society. I'm hearing him too much, so now I'm copying. Absolutely fantastic. Sorry. <laughs> it's a wink to him. Uh, it's the fact that you get other notes than if you take, a, for instance, a Royal Brackler or the Glen Cadam uh, first feel. And if I even managed to pick uh, tiny red fruits in something that normally should not have in bourbon cask, right? Uh, I don't remember if you picked that as well. As we yeah. know, that's very personal. And also the custard note that I love so much in that whiskey you're showing. Yeah, well, there's lots of red fruits in their new make. The white yeah. doesn't. Okay. 
That makes sense then. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I second you on what you say. It's because I haven't tried for a long time. So, uh, okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. Third one maybe now. <laughs> Matt's oh, an oh, English okay. whiskey from St. George's Distillery. The the one we were talking about. Is it the yeah, one so th which this is, is special? Yeah, so this Sorry. is all um, ex-bourbon. Some first fill, some virgin, and it's a vatting. Okay. Um, okay. And it, it's forty-six percent. It was a, a a special version for the Sumpton Whiskey Club, oh, and okay. it's it's one that I loathe to drink because I know there'll be no more. And it's mm. really good. The fact that it's ex bourbon, um, because it again you get that nice distillery character. You get the spiciness and the baking spices that you get from a, a bourbon cask, and it's you want to say, um, yeah, yeah, it's really really tasty. You want to say a word? We're not there for advertising, but I heard from you and others they do a good job. You want to say a few words about this Summerton Club, or yeah? So the Summerton Club is a, a whiskey subscription uh, by post. It's fifty pounds every two months, and they send you a bottle of whiskey um that's at least 50 cl and they try to pick things that are new and interesting things that are often not on people's radars and to get you to try things new and and things like this are obviously unique you can't go and buy that particular example so the fact that you can get expressions of things that you probably you know would be interested in but you won't be able to get that exact makeup that's what makes them really good they have uh, obviously the buying power to um, find interesting things, and sometimes they, you know, they get things that are new. So, you know, the first time they're released in the UK, they're they're often um, brought out within the Sumpton Club. Good. I think there's one I tried that New Drum Drinker sent me, uh, if I'm not mistaken. It was an inch fad, so Loch Lomond, uh, pitted. Four years old, right? Was it in that flight, or did I mistake? Uh, no, there was a. No, it wasn't an inch, no. an inch gal. The single cask, the single cask. Oh, the single uh, cask was Butler. Glen Ord. Yeah. The, oh, okay, the one that so came no, it's with the an... Sumter Club was a Glen Ord. Okay, so sorry about and that. And again, yeah. uh, Glen Ord, I think, isn't on people's radars generally. It's something no. a little bit different, and um, obviously, it's tricky trying to find something interesting and uh, you know unique sometimes when you've only got 50 pounds to play with. Okay. Okay, well, I had prepared some uh, French trio as well, but I'm not sure people are interested in that now because we're passing the 20 minutes and I think people, unless people say uh, that, uh, I, I think we're gonna move on to the tasting right away. Hi, David. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna change a bit. So we're having four drums. One is, uh, the first one is blind. Second one is the Glen Scotia 1832. Third one is a uh, uh, second blind. And we have a, a third, and we have a fourth drum, which is also a blind. Okay, let, uh, we will try the first one if you're ready. And uh, I will be curious to hear your thoughts, and then I will reveal to people uh, what it is. And I also prepared some links. I uh, have the infos there. Yeah, so I can copy and I will paste later on. All right. Okay. What do we have on the nose? <laughs> And you have something to say about the color, maybe? I don't know. And yeah, so this, this isn't that dark. No. Um, I'm assuming it's natural color. Otherwise, uh, it's pointless hmm, analyzing the color. A, that's a good question. Uh, let me check it out. I that's normally out. why I do blinds in a blue glass, because the color can sometimes influence what you think it's matured in. Yeah. Well, there's an ambiguity. I will, I will tell you on the packaging and on my infos. It says clearly it non it's non chill filtered, but it doesn't state about the color. Uh, I will assume it's natural, but I have no evidence about that, to be honest. Okay.
Okay. I'm not getting much on this. It's it's it seems that like, um it's an introductory drum to the flight, so yeah, I choose seems a bit to progress light. In, yeah, it's a light one. Hint, it's a hint of savory, like almost like herbal. Mm -hmm. Getting some vanilla. The nose did evolve a bit. Uh, there must be ten centiliters. Uh, out of the bottle, so it's not neck pour, but it's not too far uh, away from the opening. Um, it is something that has moved a bit. There was a note I didn't like in it, uh, a, a bit soapy. I don't know if you get it. It seems to have disappeared. But uh, there are notes uh, there I find interesting, and now I don't know that I don't have them. So I really hope it's not because I had this COVID stuff and I haven't completely uh, recovered. For me, I'm 80 to 90, maybe 100. I don't know. Because sometimes I get a 10 different notes. Sometimes I get only two or three. So I don't know if it's yeah, me when, when or I if had, it's whiskey. Yeah. When I had uh, COVID, it, it took me seven weeks to get my sense of smell back. Yeah, it's terrible. Me, two months and a half. And I think judging by some tasting at whiskey live and after i have to have recovered more than uh, i thought but still sometimes you're not taking ever you're not getting everything so it's always a humbling experience so i'm not getting everything i have now from the uh, the notes even from my notes with this one i'm really struggling to pick much out I'm having some teash notes, yeah. I'm still having that a uh, bit of Earl Grey and oh, maybe yeah, maybe black black tea. tea. Yeah, uh, some I have also some floral notes, but in this version they're not as prominent as in another version I will show you after, which blew my mind. Uh, so I have I'm supposed to have lily and the valley and jasmine, but I don't have them really now today. I mean. Tasting no, is a different experience. I'm, yeah. I'm, I am okay. i do not know about you, but... So I move to uh, the palate? Yeah, just a second before that. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you think when you try, let's say you try the same whiskey several times in a month, do you think it will be always a different experience each time? Or, no, I, I find... Uh, I, I find when I... When I'm writing notes on whiskey, um, I'll sit there probably for a good 15, 20 minutes yeah, nosing spend before more time. I even start tasting. Yeah, you spend more time with it than yeah. just... But, for but if I'm next. just going to open the bottle and have a drink of it, then I spend a lot less time, you know, maybe a minute or two nosing before I then drink yeah, it. Yes, so you might catch less stuff, right? Yeah, so I, I always okay. try to make sure that my palate doesn't influence... Um, my nosing first when i'm hmm. writing notes because do, i think as soon a, as you take a sip of it yeah. that then influences yeah, yeah. what you can nose on it of course of course do you have a calibration whiskey before that or no Some yeah so that. so normally uh, I, I i use um something from middleton something i'm familiar with so mm -hmm. either uh jameson original or the um powers gold label just because you to know, see if cheap. you're uh, in good mood and for that. I know exactly you know. what they smell and taste like. Okay. And the consistency Great. with any bottle of that is going to be the same. I, I, so I do good, that. Good starting place. Several times as well. Okay. Okay, let's go on the palette. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> you don't want to wait, make you wait too long. I will do so. Getting lots of vanilla. Mm. I hope you people are good in the chat. I don't see no more comments. I hope it works. Yeah. Okay. Ah, this reminds me of um, uh, 
either a blend or a single grain. It's very light. Hey, it's, hi, Whiskey um, Nose. Yeah, there's a reason for that, unfortunately. Yes, yeah, so it's very I light. Still, do spirity. believe it's 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 a decent whiskey, um, but lacking of something extra, maybe to shine uh, more. I have the idea of what's lacking, but <laughs> um, I'm getting some toffee. Yeah, caramel, burnt sugar. Yeah, it's very sweet might for me. Be some reason why you. Uh, let me. Oh, Asturian cider. My God, what is this? <laughs> Oh, Madrid, you're in Madrid. Fantastic. Enjoy. Enjoy your time and your, your meal there. Cheers, David. Uh, GD is on... Uh... Oh, he's already on the Glen Scotia. Oh, my God. Interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so I did well to pass my own selection of French whiskeys, right? <laughs> we will do that another time, guys. Don't worry. Okay, so basically... Um... A bit frustrating experience you would say or just something light that you might uh, enjoy but not necessarily uh, buy a bottle or yeah I'd, I'd say there's i'm not picking out things that make me think this is not a single malt interest yeah there's not a single malt did you say no, no it's a question it's oh yeah possibly could be a single malt but it might be a low-end inexpensive single malt. okay other, other than that, I think it's I won't probably say that. a, a yeah. blend. Mm -hmm. And you have an idea of the, the origin and the age? Probably Scotch. And the age? And I'd probably say non-age statement. Hmm. Okay. Do you want a few clues? I don't think it's probably any more than about yeah. six, six or eight years old. Yep, six years old. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> And the ABV? Uh, I think you're going to nail it. Well, it, it definitely tastes quite light, but I don't think it's... Still open at this I don't think it's 40, so I think it's probably 43 to 45. That man is good, but I knew it. 42. Okay. Which is a weird ABV, but it is common in that... Uh, kind of a so will it help for you to know the location I like the opening but there's still some frustrating things some residual sugar but it's yeah. a sweet whiskey it's a starter but also to make you discover something um, do you want the reveal or <laughs> yeah, go on then. I don't know if I can put this as for my videos. It's a French single malt, my friend. <laughs> it's one on the sweet side. It's from the Hep Distillery, uh, which is located um, in the east of France, in the Alsace area here. So there's a map of France, and it's in the east. It's not my favorite of them, but it's one that I found interesting. I was curious because it's 80% bourbon, 20% sherry. Um, what does he say? Yeah, there might be, I don't know, but it can be also the kind of cask they use. For once, there's no wine cask in this, but you won't believe me, but in this version which is 40 percent it's way more powerful than this but here it's also wine white wine cask involved uh this is the that one is the standard but it's they like to do play of words right johnny hep it's <laughs> i'm not sure it's super funny and uh the packaging it's a bit i don't know what you think but uh but the whiskey is absolutely insane in terms of floral profile. Never seen stuff like that. Um, I'm just going to pick 
a whiskey which I wanted to show in my three favorite, uh, not, not three favorite, but three whiskeys I could. Uh, yeah, good question. I'm going to answer to that in a moment. No, they do produce a lot of uh, fruit spirit and they produce, for instance, Mirabelle, uh, some kind of plum prune uh, spirit. And I will advise rather this, but this the problem is very, uh, it's way less. How many bottles? 350. This is an independent bottling from Emeric Roborel de Clemens. And I will have to uh, put that link. Where is it? Yeah, for those interested. Um, and uh, for those who want to see, by the way, the whiskey, you, you have a link there. It's a French shop because I didn't find an English shop to show you with something more. Uh, can I? copy and paste this sorry uh might not be a good idea uh because i'm not gonna put it there uh, just a minute sorry guys bad uh bad thing i have because you cannot see it if it's in the oh, sorry about that yeah that was not a good idea to put it into a banner uh okay I will not do that. Uh, so yeah, so the uh, Emeric Robert Le Clemens, you have the English page here, just a sec. And I'm going to add it to the comments as well. Voila. So this guy has been working for 20 years in the Bordeaux wine industry. And what he did is weirdly, he picked this uh, Alsatian from the other side of France uh distillate to work on it and make it he he says is re refining whiskies he's not an indie butler he refines whiskies so we basically take spirit from uh, the distillery you just tried and he puts it into special wine casks and monitors it a long time uh, and this is in cabernet franc by the way and you have a lot of information here um non chill filtered non colored uh what else can i say the producer of the wine is uh, always stated it's 51 percent abv and for this one the finish is in uh amphora like the old uh technique for wine uh conservation preservation uh in the old days so it's very special and uh, it was one of my whiskies of the year uh, a few years ago, it's a complete different experience than the HEP, but you can still, I don't want to be too long on that, you can still feel the uh, the distillate from the HEP distiller in it. There you go. And I'm stopping there. We're going to go now to this that many of you seems to have now. Um, maybe, yeah, I'll take some. Have you tried it before the uh, uh, the show, Toby, or is it completely new no, for you? No, I've not tried this one before. I've tried um, lots of Glen Scotia's, but never tried this one. Okay. So this one is a travel retail that they launched in 2017. I don't know if it's better like that. Maybe. Oh, so now I'm not aligned with the uh, look at this is gorgeous it's silk screened on the bottle i love that i, I must be stupid but <laughs> and yeah gd likes it a lot as well and you see the har the harbor of campbell down in it and i think there's something special in this even more for the packaging than the um double cask but uh do you want to have more details about it or or first uh have the drink it maybe try it yeah okay. maybe nose and taste it and then you can yeah. tell us a bit more about about okay. the bottle so it has that really nice um diesel note that you get on campbell towns the funk that sort of engine oil <laughs> yeah used engine oil it really is nice it definitely it's one of those sherry or wine in there as well 
It's one really of the most like red fruits. No. One of the most, uh, I have to say, uh, representative and the most balanced Glen Scotia ever, in my opinion. Yeah, there's a nice uh, sort of toffee note. And it has a subtitle, which is rich and... Uh, no, I'm not on the good page, sorry. Oh, I have the double cask sheet. <laughs> And interestingly, uh, I scored it lower, uh, though very high, lower than the 1832 we're having now. Um, what do I want it to say? Sorry. Yeah, forget about it. Uh, oh, I forgot to say, sorry, guys, uh, the Hep Distillery, the French one, started to produce uh, fruit spirit in 1972. But they do whiskies only from 2005. As many French distilleries, there were only a handful once before year 2000, maybe two or three, that's all. Now there's over 77. <laughs> oh, hi, Luna. Good to have you <laughs> on board. Very cool. Yeah, Campbelltown galore now. So, uh, Cheers, Luna, and everyone who has it, or everyone who has a double cask, maybe, which is not so far. Do you think there's something special about the maturation of this uh, on, on the nose already? Or yeah, I think there's some sherry or, sherry or wine in there. You want the reveal of the recipe or, or be after the, a sip, maybe? Yeah, after a sip. Okay. So, cheers, my friend, and cheers, cheers everyone. Oh. I like this. Wow. <laughs> that is incredibly fruity. Yeah, and it is 40. I forgot to say, it's one liter, so global travel retail. Uh, mostly in airport, you will find that uh, I, a friend of mine brought it back to Lon from London and it's 46 percent ABV, it's the same. Mm. And it says, Yeah, sorry, it says rich and gently smoky. It's a sub, uh, the nickname they put on the uh, on the back label. Oh, Loch Lomond 12, interesting. Yeah, that is tasty. Yeah. Very nice. What if I tell you that the recipe for this is, uh, we don't know the proportions, to be honest, but the same X bourbon and X uh, PX uh, sherry as the double gask. <laughs> okay, so the proportions are probably different then. Yeah, I guess, but I couldn't have an answer. Uh, I would say for... this has got more PX. Probably. Um, is. As for the age, some say it's from 6 to 12 or more. I have the info from Michael Henry, but I wonder if the batches don't vary about the age of 7 years old, at least, as a basis. Uh, yeah. While well, it's 5, 6, if I remember the double cask. I wanna say so is this still current? Uh, I think we should ask GD about that because it's is in airports all the time. I think yes, but it has change of uh, it has change of uh, packaging. It's less beautiful than this one of what I saw, but I couldn't pick a second bottle. But I really, really recommend this one. Yeah, so I haven't tried a 16. Uh, so I can tell which is a travel retail, I think. There's a new one now in France arriving, uh, but it's on the, uh, your place already. It's a 10 years old, but unfortunately it's a 40 percenter. Yeah, uh, I've seen that they've, they've just released um, a double cask. Uh, oh, cask that's, that's another one. That's interesting. Yeah, that's on my wish list. On the, <laughs> on the paper. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, I might and have to get one for my birthday. Mm. Uh, is anybody of you guys uh, already tried that double cask rum finish? Uh, uh, we are very curious about that. 
I've heard I've only heard good things about it, so from a few people that have told okay, me. Okay, so you like this one, Toby? Yeah, very very tasty. Uh, you feel like adding a few drops? I will do. I think it develops well. But you're free not to add. Uh, yeah, I, I am uh, in your page. I do think there's probably more peaks in there. Uh, I can't be sure, but uh, next time I, I catch Michael Henry in the chat, I shall ask him. So I, I do get a lot of red fruit notes, uh, also some uh, forest moss and, uh, and green elements, vegetal in French. A few floral as well. Um, no. Yeah, I definitely get the vegetal notes on the nose. My mistake pages all the time. Why? Oh, there you go. What do I get else? Um, mm, 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 slightly smoky, but uh, even a bit coastal, very discreet. Yeah. I get some citrus fruit, but very tiny. Even some uh, dried fruits such as dates. Uh, I wrote also some slightly ginger spice in the finish. Um, what else? And some verbena in the in the uh, nose. You won't believe it, but I rated this ninety-two and a half out of a hundred. Uh, I know I score differently from many people. There's a pleasure factor in it, so it kind of heightens the notes. While the double cask, the mine is from 2018, I rated it 89 out of 100, so very good score as well. This one is from 2017, uh, mind you, so maybe the profile has changed. Yeah, I really like sweet whiskies, and this um, this is right up there with uh, whiskies I like. Yeah, to, to answer Luna exactly what we were saying, we do believe together with Toby now that uh, there's probably more uh, peaks in this than in the double cask. And it's probably a bit dirtier, I would add, and a bit slightly smokier as well. Um, it's also the bottle do evolve. Uh, when you open it, uh, the neck pour was absolutely amazing. Uh, it tends to get more green as much as I'm going a bit greener or a bit funkier uh, but uh, i like both and i will be happy to have both oh what does gd says okay interesting thank you uh, gd it's uh, it's interesting so i hope i answered luna's question but maybe toby you can have your say on the comparison if you remember it uh i don't have the bottle close so yeah it was it was the first um it was the first uh glen scotia that i bought and um there's definitely um that sort of dirty funky note is a little bit stronger in this than the standard double cask for me and um there's definitely more salinity in this and I remember in the yeah, double it's, cast. it's more coastal, I agree. Mm. Uh, it's really nice that that salt and sweet really it's um almost like raspberry jam, it's lovely. Yeah. Agreed. So okay, valid <laughs> validation for this. <laughs> yeah, it's um it's a great whiskey. Yeah. And this one was kept by our friend's coin certified original in which we both are uh, New Drum Drinkers Discord. Oh, ha, it's a, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough one, uh, Luna. Uh, I would say, I don't know. Uh, I won't say that. I don't know you, Toby. Yeah, I, I'd say it's sweeter for me. Sweeter than the double cask? Yeah, for me it is. Okay. Well, I, I would love say maybe, maybe it depends on batches. I don't know. Yeah, uh, definitely. It's hard, definitely hard to answer. 
because some say now some double cask are way less interesting than before. Uh, GD says their latest one has, are better. So it's quite difficult to... Uh... I suppose that in a way that's that has its upsides and its downsides because obviously we like the fact that uh, distilleries like Glen Scotia can bring out things that have batch variation, but it's not very good if you really like something and then mm. buy another bottle and it's not the same. Yeah. So it definitely has its plus sides I would and do, its downsides. I would do a, an exception with Springbank and something weird appeared. I don't know if you can see it. I don't want to grab it because each time I have to wash my hands as I bought it only a, a Friday. Um, my bottle of Nick Nin. Uh, I saw a Springbank 10 years old 2022 bottle at the same shop. I wasn't going for that because I have a 10 years old a black label uh, closed and I have a 10 years old current orange and black almost finished and another one in advance. But with Springbank, you know what's going on. It's going to be hard to find harder and harder until yeah. they're uh, up up their production because all this happened also because they were not at seven, as I understood. They were not these last years at 750,000 liters per year. They were uh, closer to th 300 or less. So that's also why uh, they couldn't supply all the demand, even for the 10 years old. I understood that. So uh, maybe it will change. They're not expanding. I, I heard they, they will not expand. They will not change things uh, to increase production more than that. But uh, I did a, a difficult decision because uh, uh, it was for my birthday. Uh, uh, I said, okay, I'm gonna grab the Nikneen because it's something that seems interesting and new and it's also craft. And I wanna let some people to have the chance, it was the last bottle of the 10 years old. I, I want some people to have the chance to put his hand on that. Someone who maybe doesn't have any other spring bank, 10 or any other spring bank. Hoping flippers will not go there and buy it for that. So I took that difficult decision to take something way younger. Uh, but, uh, well, I really hope someone will be happy with that. Yeah, so maybe Luna, it's not for you. Uh, uh, Victoria and I have to go back to it, but honestly, it didn't impress me much. And it's expensive. And the same, I'm sorry for the 15, too much batch variation. So I'm not on the page of many people. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's why I have an 18 and it's good. <laughs> okay. How about moving on, if you feel like, to the next drum, uh, my friend? Yeah. And it's a blind one again. Haha. <laughs> right, so this one's painted. Yes. <laughs> and I know the PPM now because I was not sure, so I double checked. I wouldn't say it's um it's not it it doesn't seem heavily peated on the nose. I'll let you discover it's a bottle. It's a little bit more like um smoldering bonfire than it is vegetal okay. for okay. me. There's a little a bit of sea salt in there. Yeah. It doesn't seem very sweet on the nose. To me. I had some rough notes that are fortunately away now. Even some cardboard. Uh, I have some linseed oil that normally strikes mm. a chord in another place than this one is. Uh, for me on the nose, I have half dry half uh, um uh, i don't know the word in english damned gotta double check uh, i think it's bold but i'm not sure what's the opposite of uh dry uh bold okay so for me the peat is half 
uh, dried half boiled. Don't know if that makes sense. Makes sense in English. Um, no, not particularly. <laughs> okay, sorry, guys. It has some herbal side. It has definitely a lot of green elements. It has a little sea spray uh, for me. It has some maybe. Um, yeah, fruit on the fruity become, side. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's starting to become more uh, vegetal for me now. Okay, grapefruit. Yeah, I would say yeah. a bit of grapefruit, uh, Luna, a bit unsexy. But the oh, thing yeah. is, when you get to the palate, that's interesting for me. But I won't spoil that for, for Toby yet. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Now you say grapefruit. Yeah, so there's something off-putting in this nose, but as I know the distillery quite well, uh, I knew that you should go over this <coughs> to go to the ballot. So, okay. Also, oh, GD, you're still on the on the double cask, right? I guess. I wouldn't say that because maybe uh, uh, my eighteen. Uh, 2018 was not like that, but I get your point. I hope I don't have an important message. Okay. Going back. Okay, I hope, guys, it's interesting so far. I don't know. <laughs> we will have five people watching. Okay, so maybe now... Oh, yeah. Uh, what about viscosity? It's, it's, quite, it's, quite, it's quite light as well. I'm assuming yeah. it's natural color. That's, it um, is natural color, possibly not filtered. Ex bourbon cask. It's very light. Correct. <laughs> Should we move on to the palette? As you wish. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. <laughs> Doesn't seem overly um, peated. Still seems quite light for me. It's not mm -hmm. dominating the palate. It's um, got nice vanilla sweetness in there from the bourbon. Not too sweet. I would say this is lightly peated. You can also put a few drops if you like, uh, as you wish, to see how it. React so I hope I'm not rushing you too much. No, no, you tell me, okay. With a few drops of water, I get getting uh, a slightly meaty note from it mm -hmm. on the nose. Well, the like 18 crispy and... bacon, okay. Uh, yeah, there's a little about that, I think. Uh, GD and Luna, I have the 18, but uh, it did evolve a lot for the first uh, 6, 8 CL. So I'm waiting a bit to get it maybe stabilized before I do the review. Just to let you know, but I will review it. Uh, and it's a pre-rebranding uh, bottling, so don't remember now the, uh, the when it was bottle but okay where is the box right yeah it's slightly vegetal on the palate mm -hmm. um a little bit of wood smoke yeah um reminds me of the um sort of smoke profile that you get on mac mirrors the uh, sort of juniper wood smoke okay. it lingers like that it's quite nice would you guess uh, ABV, age, and location, um, stuff like that? I think there's probably 46, 48%. 46, I wouldn't correct. Have thought, I wouldn't have thought it was an old whiskey, under 10 years old, maybe 12 at a push. And okay. my guess would be it's Scottish. Oh 
Haha. It is 46% ABV and it is not Scottish. Okay. <laughs> <You> can... <laughs> to let you other uh, options maybe before I, I reveal. Um, is it European? Yes. And it's okay. not a berry bros. It's yeah. just to hide what it is. Um, I'm guessing it isn't Swedish. No, uh, I have some McMurray's. I also have some high coast. Uh, I think I send you the timber, right? A yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is I like a lot. I and frankly, I hesitated a lot between the uh, high coast uh, timber and the Glen Scotia. 1832, but I thought it was cool to uh, maybe let you try uh, along with me. Ha ha. <laughs> so last guess maybe of the location. Um, I'm assuming it's not French. It is. Or is it? <laughs> <laughs> From my favorite French distillery so far, from Brittany, and this is Glen Armor. What they have rebranded, so West Coast. So they have rebranded all. I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you some link. Um, the box is like this, was like this. Uh, some say it's very uh, art baggy, I don't know. Uh, let me see if it's better like that. What is fantastic with this is um, you have a French version and you have the English version as well. It's around five, six years old, I think, not much. But okay. look yeah, at I didn't think look it was at, that old. Look at what they uh, saying. I don't know if you can read it. I'm going to read it for you. 100% life flame. It's with gas, uh, slow distillation, small stills, wooden washbacks, warm tubs uh and honestly so that you have a little map here uh this is a, a they have been rebought by a bigger company now they have rebranded it let me uh yeah it's corner that's that's the current packaging uh under the, the old packaging and i'm gonna show you the new one uh, I tried it at Whiskey Life Paris uh, to make sure it hasn't changed, and it hasn't changed. Uh, they just removed the rock ear, which uh, means uh, the long rock in, in uh, um, Brittany language. They have removed everything from the, the that could be really Brittany. Uh, you have the back label. And they're also the nice um, lighthouse. Oops. And this is the pitted version at 40 ppm. And this is the unpitted, which is called Glen Armor, uh, which means close to the, the sea. And uh, that one is a special version with Maris Otter Barley. And they're going to go more for this and remove everything like optic and this kind of. Uh, uh, barley. Um, th these are around four, five, six years old, and I think the distillate is fantastic. The unpitted maybe showcases it even more. They have now changed the name. They uh, call it Celtic Whiskey Distillery. Uh, they were the first to bottle uh, whiskies with a sauté and finish back in hmm, around 2008 or 2005, I'm not sure now. Uh, they do whiskey since 1999. First whiskey was 2005. I have the first versions, uh, cast rank, and the, the, they do some hype it crazy stuff. But yeah, this is the youngest. Uh, I have I reviewed recently the uh, 11 years old Coteau du Léon finish, which is a sweet wine, which starts to develop very well now. Uh, I don't know. So, yeah, some mistake it with the Nyla, but <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I don't know your thoughts about this one. Yes, yeah, it's, it's quite Final nice. Final thoughts. 
it's uh, not too peated and it's um, a nice sort of gentle wafting smoke that lingers on the palate. Yeah, and there uh, goes Mr. Frederick. What does Luna say? Uh, where do they get? Uh, it's local. We are allowed in France to have some peat, not everywhere, but it's peat from Brittany. And I don't know if you saw the article. Oh, yeah, it's the box from the unpitted version. Don't know if you saw the article about the shortage of peat in Isla, the whiskey cast Mark uh, talked about. So they said everything, not Diageo, we go, is going to struggle with uh, find pit after 2024, if I understood well. <laughs> so might run out of Kilhoman and uh, Brooklady, etc. Unless they uh, sourced at Port Ellen Maltings, we don't know. Uh, but Maltings are one thing, and pit. Uh, yes. But it's a boutique distillery again. It's a very tiny. They have a less than 100,000, uh, 50, maybe 50,000 liters. It's, it's, a, it's a very small. And you're not allowed to visit it, which is very frustrating. You can only see the shop and the distillery from outside because the stills are inside the building of, uh, of the owners. So <laughs> the house, it's a very weird thing. Right, and that's and that you know why now, Toby, I told you to maybe prepare some bread or oat cakes because next one will be not or very low, lowly pitted. So it's a it's a gamble. It's a bet I do that it could work because the profile is completely different, but there's still some wood smoke or earthy uh, uh, light smoke in it. How we're doing so far? Good. Yeah, good. <laughs> it's interesting because I've just uh, grabbed the uh, final dram and oh. um, just sitting under my nose. It's just through. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah, quite punchy. Very dark. Very red. Yeah, quite sticky legs. Sorry. Apologies for the sound. It smells like treacle. Well, normally this is not the kind of drums I I send samples, honestly. I did do that only one or once or twice with some special people. So that means you're special. <laughs> um, oh, what's this? Well, I'm not sure I understand. Ah, okay, okay. Okay. Well, they do others. Um, the one, I missed the one who was a novelty at Whiskey Life Paris. I have a sample of it. But before I even took time to review it, the bottle was sold out in a few hours. Ugh. So it's way more uh, better than the one we had, but it's also older and it's a uh, full house ABV and with a very special selection of cask. This one is a core range. You just try just to let you know. Uh, sticky legs. <laughs> So, my friend, <laughs> we might be back somewhere. I don't know. You never know. Some more familiar. Maybe, maybe not. This is uh, like liquid Christmas. Yep. It's, uh, we're not in Christmas, but we're in close to my and your. Uh, mine is uh, November 10th, birthday, and yours is 11 or? No, 9th. Day before. 9th. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, ju I just have forgotten. So it's a kind of a happy birthday dram also because you have to wait a bit too much for uh, the uh, 
second set of samples and there was an accident for one of the samples. So I, I decided, hi Chich, I decided to name that blind wine the delayed parcel compensation drama, <laughs> which I found funny. So I hope it will compensate the weight. There is like um, on? Go on. Sorry? There, is, there is like a um that sort of almost like that sort of Campbelltown funk. I do get it on some highlands as well. Well, there's, there's a, a reason in the background. Well, the reason for uh, there's some smokiness and some maybe funkiness. It's well, you you you'll guess maybe. What struck me the most about that, and and it's a clue. Uh, supermarkets is going to be difficult. Uh, no, it's typically retailers. But uh, I I I gave you a link. Um, it is available in whiskey exchange, but for us European, it's not very inter interesting. Aha! No, it's not a Burslagen. I could, uh, but it's not. Um, Burslagen, uh, for those who don't know, it's the name of the indie bottler. Sorry, almost a licensed bottling of Grititan, which was a very short time producing Swedish distillery. Which, in a way, uh, I did say Springbank of the North, but today I will say more uh, Brora of the North. So it gives you an idea of how good this uh, closed distillery from Sweden uh, is. Uh, I already talked about it, but I, I should review uh, the bottle uh, that uh, Frederick sent me uh, last year uh, as soon as possible. I have an idea to match something I posted on Instagram. Again, I'll probably t uh, taste it along something else. Yeah, uh, if, if you search online on French, uh, I will. I can search for you if you like. You might find. But uh, the special releases is. Uh, we have Carl. Hi, Carl. Thanks for passing by. Yes, uh, they're still. St they still have stock. Stocks, it's a bit like Karizawa, but it's less expensive than Karizawa. <laughs> they come by 50 CL bottles, mind you, and around 100 euros, a bit less. So it's not cheap, but oh, I just up the rating of uh, the one Frederick sent me, which was a Madeira cask, and I upped it to 96 out of 100. I'm sorry. <laughs> the same rating I uh, gave my Whiskey of the Year 2020. Poor child at 16. Uh, and it's almost the rating I give to uh, every Brora I tried. So it's Brora category and Brora style for those who know. Right. Getting back to this, you have an idea on the nose of uh, the distillery, the, the age, etc., location, uh, Toby? <sighs> um, I would say it's quite old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 16 years plus. Mm -hmm. Correct. I'd say it's probably about 50% ABV on the nose. A bit less, but uh, good guess. I'd say uh, it's, my guess would be it's probably some sort of scotch. I like the some sort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some sort. Um, I know they have made a, they have made a, a release. This distillery has made a release since uh, the same age, but I have no idea if I would like it. And mostly, I'm hundred percent sure I won't be able to afford it. Well, this one when I bought it in two thousand ten, so you probably can't guess what it is exactly. It cost me 150 pounds. And uh, it was uh, sent to me, uh, arranged for me by a friend in UK. So I don't know if I shall reveal yet or what's the box? Okay, the box is <coughs> just a sec to find the box.
Anybody is guessing? And maybe we should talk more about the profile on the palette. Uh, have okay. you got to the palette? No. No, let's have a sip. Oh, okay, okay. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers or Slangeva or. Okay, it works after the cornog. It was my fright, but it's okay. Wow. That's um it's like liquid raisins. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> raisins, dates, figs. Yeah, yeah chocolate. All of the sort of dark dried soaked fruits, that sort of stuff. Yeah, too, I would say wow. I don't want to spoil your notes. Uh, it is almost like liquid PX. Ah. It's not PX. I can no, but it you. is like that. It's the fact that it's so rich okay. and fruity. Yeah, it's, yeah, I agree. It reminds it's me thick. of uh, yeah. It's thick, yeah, in the mouth. It coats the palate. The ABV definitely uh, isn't as hey, punchy Jason. On the palate. Oh, it's funny you're coming now. It's very funny you're coming now because we're tasting this. Uh, Toby's tasting this blind. And I won't spoil already the reveal, but uh, Jason, please don't tell it in the chat, but you will do your guess uh, on, in due course. You could guess what it is. And it's possible you have tried it. And I'm sure you have seen the bottle. Because, and it's a clue for Toby, because it's something the company you're working in is related to. Haha. <laughs> Not sure everybody knows, but I think some some knows uh, in the chat. Some knows that Luna probably is aware of, uh, and maybe yourself, Toby, if you, or maybe it's going to confuse you. Forget it and concentrate <laughs> on the nose. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and now uh, uh, Jason is searching <laughs> what it is. <laughs> And like I said, Luna, if you come here, you're going to try it too. So uh, I'm not going to send any other sample of this because if it's lost in the post, I, I will not be happy. Mm. Oh, I was going to say, Luna, is it good? But not sure, apparently. Um... Okay, so me, I found some old style um, um cacao we said here powdered chocolate yeah. for breakfast uh, van Uten, uh, the one that's quite dark I, I had some even a hint of musk the perfume also a lot of uh, cherries with uh, soaked in armagnac uh, licorice and yeah trickle what else is there a lot of stuff a bit of precious wood, but I'm not sure which wood I will say. And on the palette, some uh, chestnut and heather uh, honey. I don't know if it's me. Uh, some lilac as well. Uh, some black tea and mocha. I don't know if you get the mocha from me. It's very characteristic. No, I, this. I get the black tea. Yeah, and some and it's wood very smoke. bitter on the finish. A slightly bitterness. I, yeah. You can open it just two drops. I tried this and oh, January, that will be cool. I'm not yeah. sure you tried this bottle, uh, Jason, but your boss has something to do with it, definitely. I don't know if Toby knows for which company Jason works now and Luna. So what's going, uh, what is it doing with a few drops, Toby? What would you say? For me, it removes a bit of the bitterness to, um, to add a bit of layers of chocolate and... Definitely get more chocolate now. Definitely. It's liquid sort of like chocolate raisins. It's a tablet of, you know, the less sophisticated chocolate with uh, lots of uh, piece, bits of uh, uh, raisins and different things and nuts and 
I wouldn't say it's a true sherry bomb. And uh, Serge Valentin from Whiskey Fun, my friend, did review it. Uh, he said it's not a sherry bomb, but it's an old school sherry whiskey. And he gave it a 90 and I gave it a, a 93. Not a 100. So I see your face is now intrigued. And <laughs> you have a, a, an idea of uh, yeah, I'm the just, distillery? Yeah, I'm just wondering if maybe it's uh, Glen Allocky. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Am I right? <laughs> bravo, bravo, as we say in French. There you have it, my friend. Wow. It's 35 years old, Glenallachie, for uh, the, uh, the 10th yeah, anniversary. Yeah, I didn't think it was that old. In I thought it might have been in the early 20s. Uh, it was distilled in 1975 and uh, bottled in 2010. It's uh, for the 10th anniversary of the Whiskey Exchange. Maybe I can put it like this. Oh, it's better. 10th anniversary of the Whiskey Exchange, so it's an anniversary selection. And it's uh, in their range uh, because Jason works for uh, Whiskey Exchange. Uh -huh. Single malts of the single malts of Scotland is the range, and it's a fantastic drink. Oh, you haven't tried it, but you heard of it. So there you have it. Oh, it's your birth year. I didn't know. Uh, I know it's Ken's one, but I don't know if he Ken's it's still there. Uh, so good to know. I have to write this down because my, my friend, I have I something else. I can't believe Luna's given yeah. her yeah. age away. <laughs> <laughs> I thought but you were you know younger what? than that, Luna. You know what? I have also a beautiful 1975 Linkwood for you to try, <laughs> Luna. <laughs> How about that? So are you? So you're not surprised because you guessed it. As you see, it, it was not sold here. Uh, yeah. So not. Yeah, you guessed the the style probably because you have some Glenallach is home. It's the only one I have home. Toby. Yeah, I've never I've never actually owned a Glenallach, funnily enough, but I have tried a number of them now. Well, I probably tried less than you, but to be honest, nothing really stands out for me compared to this. <laughs> Uh, from them, uh, I I liked kind of like the eight years old they pulled out this year, the ten years old cast shrink and the fifteen yeah okay but they're working too much the oak with different kinds of oak and virgin and and it's for me it loses the beauty of this one. Uh, but of yes, course this will be stunning. way more yeah way more expensive yeah. today this <laughs> than yeah. one hundred fifty. I think so over 500. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot, guys. I'm going to give you the page of uh, Whiskey Base. So maybe you can have a look. Yeah, I agree. Old link would. Uh, Whiskey Base page. First field sherry cask, forgot to say, 685 bottles only. Uh, and it by that time, funnily, uh, it was called uh, the company, the indie company was called The Specialty Drinks and not Elixir Distillers. Yep. <laughs> but this was before Billy Walker treatment. Yeah, whiskey base. Sometimes there are a few mistakes on whiskey base. Bearing in mind, if it's people who are filling whiskey base's pages, they are corrected on an unregular basis. Uh, I mean, regular, but too, uh, they took too much time. And I see mistakes. I see mistakes about bottling dates. I see mistakes about uh, the uh, labels. Uh, and uh, yeah, but average value is not necessarily uh, always the, the 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 value will find it 339 euros uh, i'm not sure <laughs> better think uh, twice than that but yeah it was my surprise drum for you uh, toby <laughs> well thanks Hi, for hanging, sending me. It? really enjoyed it you're very welcome so there you have it the full set on the table so it's a kind of dreamy drums that uh, it's it's cool to share with the 
with people and and uh, i'm very uh pleased that you guessed it it's fantastic well so am i <laughs> i surprise myself sometimes and what is weird for me is this distillery dates i had to double check this distillery dates from 1967 so it's after my birth year 1966 it's five, 65. So it's very weird. This feeling so old, and you think the distillery lasted for centuries, but no, it's a quite young distillery in a way. Like Loch Lomond, I think it's 65. Or no, uh, yeah, th those are young distilleries compared to uh, the Glenlivets and Fiddix and voila, voila. So, well done. Well done, my friend. <laughs> so, yeah, I can confirm you tried enough Glenelakis to guess it. Um, well, so we're around one hour, uh, 25 minutes. Uh, I would like to say I will advise uh, people, if you don't know yet, this lady that's very charming and passionate about whiskey, uh, Lee Ann from uh, Scotch in the Bayou. She's going live tonight in, uh, I think it's 9.30 your time, uh, Toby, and uh, 10.30 my time. She's going to do a blind flight with uh, Roy and Gregor, who are going to put her into the test. So she needs some encouragement. <laughs> She's freaking out a bit. <laughs> uh, so go check out. But before that, uh, and we'll go to the conclusion, uh, what are your final thoughts? to be about about the uh, this blind testing and maybe blind testing in particular in in general and did it brought you some ideas of reflections tonight for yeah. instance yeah i think it, because um scotch style whiskey is so prevalent it's quite easy to get stuck into a trap that you think that whiskey you're tasting is scotch so both of those french whiskies could have been a Scotch whiskey. And I think no, people no are, are, are very good at copying that style. And because then, I suppose Scotch might, doesn't have can... that identity, does it, anymore, of being uh, unique to certain regions? I have to interrupt you, sorry. Uh, if this is true for the two ones you tried, uh, this will be not the case for the other HEP distillery uh bottle this one is much more distinctive with a white wine finish uh if not almost matured in it this will also i wanted to show this earlier on the michard is quite different as well than the scottish this is fantastic one cask a year or 10 cask a year only very uh small let me highlight this small distillery in center of france they're doing a fantastic job with this. It's not cheap, it's not easy to find, but it's one of the most fruity whiskey ever and almost strange for a whiskey. Uh, and don't want to strike a personal chord, but I do think that the one I did blend has nothing to do with scotch, <laughs> but it's only me. Uh, no, but obviously yeah. it's quite it's quite easy to get stuck in that sort of mindset that when something oh, yeah, yeah, tastes yeah. similar yeah. to scotch. Yeah, yeah, I get your Scotch. point. It's very, yeah, I it's get very your easy point. to do that. Because, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, the, the majority of people's experiences with... Um, and the sales. Yeah, the, the number of bottles that Scotch sells, it's quite easy to pigeonhole that flavour profile to Scotch, you know, uh, from absolutely. the different regions. Absolutely. Uh, it does show that people are very good at creating, you know, whiskey that tastes as good yeah, as yeah, Scotch yeah, whiskey. Yeah. Would you say now, we talked about that earlier, then it's the same for English whiskey? Or could you, no. for instance, blind, do you think you would confound, mix uh, English whiskeys we talked earlier on with Scottish yeah. or not? Yeah? Sometimes. Oh, that's very honest. Sometimes, but, but, not, but not the majority of English whiskeys that okay. um, I've had taste like very young Scotch whiskeys. They're mm. very similar. So if you get the likes of uh, Nipnean or Lindor's, they're very similar to 
young English mm. whiskies because they haven't had much time in the cask. And a three-year-old yeah, whiskey, yeah. of course, it's a young and still industry. tastes a bit like a an aged new make. It's yeah. very young. I would so say until except... those distilleries, yeah, until the their whiskey gets older, they won't except... have mm. a unique profile. Maybe except uh, St. George, the English Whiskey and Co. I think they're up to 12 years old now or 13. Or... Yeah, but it's it still young. Be, well, no, uh, 14 and 15 years old, I think. Is, oh, yeah. you know, you know, like I said, I did really uh, recently communicate about one of the highlights of the. Uh, I have the bottle here, not the bottle because it's too expensive. <laughs> the picture here. Um, let me find it. Uh, and it's not in the first pages, just to let me down. Uh, France, for instance, his older whiskey has been released this year. And it's, uh, I mean, it's something that's 21 years old. While the industry of whiskey exists since 1983. But at the time, they didn't keep too much stock. I mean, it's only uh, it's only the company born in 1997 or something like that. No, not born, but doing whiskey since the uh, late 90s. Uh, why do I cannot find it? It's weird. Uh, Armoric did release its first 15 this year. So we're also quite young because they didn't kept stock. Uh, at the first place, and why I don't find it, I don't... Oh, there you go. This is the look, but they do a special decanter of the oldest French whiskey released this year. It's from Edu, uh, Distillery de Menhir, in Brittany as well. Uh, it's just lovely, it's wonderful, but it's over 500 euros. <laughs> Uh, but this is the oldest French whiskey, 21. So it's not, we cannot compete, as you said, with Scotland. Especially because people are obsessed with numbers, aren't they? Yeah. Not necessarily yeah. the liquid itself. Yeah, and that's uh, something, uh, I mean, I did, I was one of the first, I think, to do a big, big video, even if the quality is crap, I, I warn you guys, about the no edge statement questions. Uh, in which I think I try to uh, overview every aspect of it. And like I said, I consider the three or four different kinds of knowledge statement. Uh, and to put a long story short, when it's not a modern uh, big company, uh, do some cash on something weak with a special weird finish and and it's, you can see it, you can feel it when you see the packaging. When it's not that, and it's a young distillery uh, from wherever it is, and it's craft, England, France, uh, Ireland, etc. You feel it, they don't need, because they can't bring you a five years old, for instance, age statement. So you feel it and you don't care at that time, right? And then there's another thing that people forget, because there are many people who dismiss uh overlook blended whiskies and blended malts there's the science or the say the uh wizardry of the intuition of the blender uh, and now that i've touched a bit more about that i can tell you can do fantastic things with no edge statement when you mix a cask from different ages different warehouses different uh places in the in the, in the distillery and different kind of wood as well. You can do beautiful things and you will be uh, slowed down if you have to put an age statement. In the case of the one I worked with, if I had to put an age statement, it will be three years old, but most of the casks are over five or seven years old and they go up to nine. So it's, it, it's hard to, to put a three years old uh, age statement on, on whiskies that are uh, majority older. That was the problem for John, from uh, uh, John Glazer, who, who had to uh, find a way <laughs> to skip that. Anyway, uh, so, uh, we have some comments. Yeah, I, like I said, it, it depends on the approach of the industry, of the product you have in your hands. For some, some products, you feel it's not a honest uh, approach for others you know they can't they just can't bring you the age statement so you gotta 
trust them and yeah absolutely and then you have of course try before you buy uh that's the uh the proof of the pudding right toby <laughs> yeah and i i think even some people who are probably experienced with whiskey are still swayed by numbers yeah because they think older is better um but blind tasting is a great example of that yeah you know the fact that you can try something and you're that's being also completely why like yeah you've been completely subjective with the no liquid prejudices that you're, yeah exactly yeah. with the liquid that you've got in front of you you know that 35 year old glen that you, you sent to me you know if for whatever reason that was a much younger whiskey and i still liked it that's all that matters i like mm -hmm. the whiskey of it doesn't course. matter if it's got an age statement or whatever yeah, and I have to tell you, some old age statement didn't impress me at all. Uh, like I said before we recorded, I had the opportunity, and I will answer, Luna, your question. Sorry, I had the opportunity when at the beginnings of Whiskey Life Paris, where you didn't have to pay for high-end whiskies more than your ticket, I had the opportunity to try 50 years old McAllen's, uh, 40 years old Strutilers, uh, or very old Japanese whiskies, etc., uh, you get biased and overwhelmed because you have the maker or the blender in front of you who's giving you a sip of this and then you feel privileged. But you once feel obliged to, to make... Yeah, to, um... or, or not. Once, uh, you won't yeah. believe me, but I did said to Richard Patterson about... It was the Dalmore 40 because he poured me the Jura 40, which was stunning. And then I had, in a special occasion at the English Embassy, where I was invited, uh, I uh, I had the Dalmore 40, and I found it was too sulfured. <laughs> and it was mad about my comment. I said, I'm sorry, it's good, but it's too sulfured for me. I don't like it. Ah, it was mad at me, but I didn't want to lie. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the judge of peace, as we say in French, le juge de paix, those the proof in the pudding you say in uk is yeah the tasting with no yeah. influence nobody's around and and it can be very hard because it relies on batch also so it's a very tricky thing i have to say i have bad experiences about that where the bottle is great the sample is bad or the contrary so that's why you have to make reservation when you try a sample uh exactly and, it's, it's a but very the bottle is the same shot, isn't it yeah, You've and the only bottle got a limited is the amount of liquid to, and time to make a judgment. Yeah, and the bottle can evolve as well. In my place, for instance, I'm not sure uh, for those who come now. This is because of Toby I got who sent me a sample. I got this beautiful bottle, a bourbon cask of Cotswolds, and I'm discovering more than uh, since. Uh, but this is typically the kind of bottle I hesitated to buy because in my flat, the temperature can go very high. And this profile doesn't like that. So it comes across drier, etc. But yet again, still this can be great. And I not all, I know in good uh, circumstances, and I retried it at the live, I know this is a good product. So that's why I, I bought it. So now your question. <laughs> yes, at a certain extent, uh for all european whiskies because i have the text somewhere i have the regulations uh, on the side also the french version text which is not completely different uh you put an age of the individual cast you're not allowed even in france if it's the question to put a, an age statement which is older than the younger content so if you have three four five years old content you're obliged to put three years old uh, that is on the label but like uh, john did with compass box if you're asked <laughs> that's why you when he tell. do when yeah. he do come master classes uh, uh, it's funny because he says i'm not allowed to say in the label etc but if you ask me do you ask me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> then he can say. I've, I've Honestly, always found that. Yeah. I was say, I've always found that brand ambassadors, when you go to any whiskey show, 
any whiskey that's not aged statement, they will give you a good indication of the liquid that goes in. Yeah, in because it, it because they know you're in, invested in in that brand if they're open and honest with you. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, it's legal to tell. It's not legal to have it written. Yeah, I have to say I took a risk with my bottle because I had the 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 white card to do everything on label text wise, not for the rest. I, for now, the 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 uh, the police, uh, if I may say, uh, didn't say nothing. I mean the regulation uh, stuff here in France. They might do, <laughs> but I I said uh, on the label it says whiskey, so in France it has to be also three years old at least. And then I wrote on the back label, cask from five different vintages. <laughs> so what that means that that means that there's a three years old in there, and you can add five or doesn't mean each. Is follow each age is following vintage is following the other. It's not the case, but this was the way for me to say it's from three to nine years old. And guess what you can? And if you ask, I give you the disclosure and the proportions and everything. So, okay, we got other questions. Oh, uh, that's not good. okay. Yeah, I agree. I think we both agree. Toby, yeah, right? we both agree with that. <laughs> it's a, I, 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 and I am. I'm glad that we talked with a uh, whiskey life Perry. We talked with Dan, and uh, we yeah we we got along on the marmalade orange marmalade note, uh, and some Christmas spices, Christmassy spices. So it's, it's very something for me. This signature single malt. Uh, I, it's a bit remote now. Uh, it's just something really uh, seasonal, autumnal, and Christmassy. This is a real treat, and I'm very impressed. Now, uh, Luna says, "Yeah, I know, I know." Um, oh no, in France it's the same. You know, the, uh, there's not a single uh, regulation for single malt whiskey. So there's two uh, re regions there, uh, Alsace, where you had the, uh, this to start with. For those who missed it, it's a French whiskey. Uh, it was the first blind. And Brittany, there's different regulations. And because they had a, several distilleries had a fight together, even in public, it was really awful to see. Uh, they didn't agree on many points. So uh, there's a lot of distilleries on those both areas that didn't apply comply to the uh, regulation and refuse to be part of it. So now they cannot say whiskey from Brittany or whiskey for Alsace if they don't comply to those rules, 40%, etc. etc. So uh, because some distilleries like Glen Armour ask for 46% minimum, non-chill filter, non-colored, local barley, etc. And it was refused by the others because it's too difficult to have... Yeah, it's too restrictive. Ev yeah, everything from uh, from scratch local. in your area. Yeah. Otherwise, we we'll both agree it would be better if everything was local, everything was green, everything was uh, blah, blah, blah. But it's not always like that. Yeah, heard of that one. Haven't tried it yet. It's impossible to find here anyway. Yeah, uh, problem is with uh, Japan who are working on new regulations, but for now it's just a kind of local SWA that has said what it should be and what in 2024 uh, they will sue other companies if they don't comply to those regulations i did a video about that and my friend mac did one too uh, on Kampai planet uh, so we explained basically there was the oak was not if i remember uh, there's no mention of oak there's mention of wood but there's no mention of oak uh, but there has to be a, a multi distilled uh, 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 malted uh, the wash and, and the fermentation and the uh, maturation in Japan and there's the same here for those who comply for friends well long story I, I don't want to be too uh, 
Uh, I don't know whose question is that for you or for me. Maybe you can start. Yeah, I think uh, Luna was asking uh, JD if he tried. Ah, okay, oh, sorry, it's not for us. Okay, and Donna Pass. <clears throat> Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Oh, they're not allowed to do that normally. Yeah, I think they're not allowed to do that. Well, you know, it's a, it's a tough question, honestly. I think uh, even in Irish whiskey, they um, frown upon um, people disclosing the individual cast details. Oh, well, the thing in common when you are at uh, where while we are at this. In common with friends and uh, and I know that because I had to work on that. France and Ireland, they have the right to use other wood type casks than yeah. oak. But yeah. uh, England, I don't know. Do you know that? No, there is no there's no specific rules, but they tend to oh, follow so SWA. They but they so, tend to so, follow SWA. Okay, and that's because th that's seen as the gold standard. If you follow SWA, then Nobody can yeah, pull you up on I, whether or not uh, liquid maybe you can say, Yeah, maybe you can say a last word about that before we conclude. Uh, I heard that Bimber, Cotswolds, maybe Yorkshire. We didn't say a word about uh, your uh, spirit of Yorkshire. I tried six different, six or eight different uh, expressions from them. I explained that on Instagram. Uh, uh, please check what out. Think of, what did you think yeah. of uh, Yorkshire? Mm -hmm. Nice, very nice. Uh, it's a very light spirit, but uh, I like everything, honestly. Uh, the one that stood the most, of course, were the behind the counter distillery exclusive cast strength sherry, of course. No, yeah, see, but, I like uh, the Moscatel. Yeah, Moscatel it was nice. The STR nice. was nice too. No, what I wanted to say is uh, I heard uh, those distilleries are currently working on the uh, English single malt regulations. Do you have a, an are. update about yeah. that? Yeah, so as far as far as I'm aware, obviously they're trying to um, set an English standard. The problem is you've got certain distilleries currently producing that don't fit within the rules that they have mm. suggested should be the standard for English whiskey. Okay. For example, uh, Spirit of Birmingham are producing in an ice steel, which is stainless steel, Ooh. and Bimba and the likes of the English whiskey, I can't remember what the group's called, <laughs> um, they've suggested it must be made in copper. Mm. So that immediately excludes Spirit of yeah. Birmingham as effectively being able to call themselves English whiskey. Interesting. So, yeah, you, you're trying to set rules after, you know, everybody but started producing. How about the brand Oxford Rye then? <laughs> Yeah, obviously that's not malted barley. So yeah, yeah. So you know, they, they, they only use malted rye. So so you know, they don't they're, care they're about be, those rules. Okay. Yeah, they're not going to be included, but that may or may not harm the mm. we'll future see, of so, those brands so, to the public. So so how do you see the future now? It's a bit of the same question we had in the beginning, but. A future English whiskey uh, is it going to be more regulated or is it just going to grow and we'll see what well I think regulation may help those deciding to join the English whiskey landscape in future it might help them because they know exactly what they can and can't produce okay. um, for you know the mainstream consumer but mm. as the majority of English whiskey is still um niche i would say would a say. niche market for okay. you know whiskey okay. enthusiasts like me and you it was a question I, think... I forgot to ask toby do you think uh ha huh, would you say if i understand you well that people who drink in england english whiskey are obviously scottish already drinkers and aficionados and not uh new to whiskey people yeah definitely not Okay. They aren't whiskey novices. People okay. gravitate to the, the big Scotch whiskey brands first, I think. And then when they get an appreciation for whiskey or poss possibly even people gravitate to bourbon 
and American whiskies first. Okay. But they would be in the minority, and then uh, they start looking for newer brands. Okay, Luna, if you missed the beginning of the show, I think I talked about that with Toby. We did a long introduction about English whiskey, so maybe uh, we you can uh, watch it back. Okay, that, that's fantastic. Thank you, Toby. I think it, it was, uh, again, very interesting. And I really wanted to have, beyond the blind tasting, uh, your take on English whiskey today. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, thanks to everyone who was there. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed also interacting with you. And uh, we enjoyed interacting with you in the chat. There will be other live shows. I know I owe you one, Luna. <laughs> I don't forget that. Uh, and I also will have uh, professional guests. It, I'm very late on that because a lot of things happened this year. But it's on the plan. Uh, it's planned, I mean. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, Toby. So for those, again, who don't know Toby, uh, last word for you about your channel. Yeah, well, They can I'm... find you also on social. Yeah, so I'm on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, Obviously, I'm on YouTube. Um, you can find me on Facebook as well. And I do uh, whiskey reviews every week. And once a month, I do a blind tasting. The blind tasting, by the way, are called mystery monthly, monthly minis. minis. And These if nice... you want whiskey coins, then yep. you can contact me via um, social media or via my website, which is uh, whiskeyshared.com. And um, yeah. Catch me there. Thank you very much, guys, and everyone in the chat. Uh, much appreciated. <laughs> and yeah, I hope to share drums for you uh, with you too, Jason. No problem. And uh, one hour. So hope to see some. Oh, whiskey mystery. Okay, uh, we're a Sunday. Yeah, but then after you have, uh, you will have uh, Scotch in the Bayou, uh, Donna Pass, which is doing blind tasting with Roy and uh, Gregor. That's a busy day. So, yeah, I'll, I'll leave you with that. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Toby, please stay a second in the, in the, and we're going to close that. Stay backstage with me. And uh, again, bye bye, everyone. Cheers and have a nice evening. Bye. Thanks very much. Thanks. <laughs>